Hello again, everybody. In this video, we're going to start the second part of this sequence of videos. If you remember in the introduction, I said that this sequence of videos, this tutorial, will be split into three parts. In the first part, we're going to study dynamic games or sequential games. In the second part, we're going to study bounded rationality. And in the third part, we're going to look at some software. This video kicks off the analysis of bounded rationality. So if you remember, in the first set of videos on static games, we said that a main underlying assumption of game theory is that players are rational. This means that they always know what's best for them, and they always choose such an action to maximize their happiness or their utility. And as many of you know, this is probably not the case in the real world. <clears throat> in this video, or in this, this video and the subsequent video, we're going to look at some examples of how people are not fully rational and how they make mistakes. And then we're going to look at how game theory has attempted to deal with some of these issues. So to begin, I'll provide a little bit of history. One can say that bounded rationality in games, which has been known as behavioral game theory, was more or less kicked off by the research of two psychologists, Daniel Kahneman and Amos Tversky. And what these researchers did was they brought subjects into a laboratory and presented them with a decision problem. They found that in many cases, even though the decision problem was simple, the player's actions or their ultimate decision can be swayed by something as simple as how the problem was phrased. In this video, we'll go through some of those laboratory experiments and outline some of their main findings. So one of their major findings was that there was something known as a framing bias. So a framing bias says that people's ultimate decision is influenced by how the decision is presented to them. So let's give the example that they used. The example that they used was that there was a, a disease that was going to spread through some highly populated area, and they gave people, they gave one group of people this possible choice. So we'll call this group of people A. They could either save 200 people from the disease, or have it such that there is a 33% chance of saving all the people, which is 600 in this case. So we'll call it 600 total people at risk. So 33% chance of saving 600 people and 66% chance of saving none. Okay, I just rounded the, the probabilities. Of course, it's 33.3 .3 and 66.6. .6. So this is group one. They had this decision problem, A. Another group had this decision problem. So they were given the options, let 400 people die, or 33% chance no one dies, Sixty-six percent chance everybody dies. Okay, so if we look closely at this decision problem, quantitatively, the options are exactly the same. If there's 600 total people, saving 200 is the exact same as having 400 people die. And this gamble here, as we call it, is exactly the same as this gamble. 33% chance of saving 600 is the same thing as saying 36% chance that nobody dies. Now, the interesting part is that when people were presented with decision problem A, 72% of people chose option one. However, when they were presented, now these are different people, but when they were presented with option B, only 22% chose option one. So although the decision problem is exactly the same quantitatively in terms of the outcome, Kahneman and Tversky found that when you phrase a question differently, it can have a significant impact on what people choose. This is known as the framing bias. And this is just an introduction of one of the ways that people may be swayed illogically. If you phrase a question differently, even keeping the payoffs and the actual underlying decision problem the same, people may change their decision. In the next video, we'll go through a couple more laboratory examples, but I think this framing bias gives a good flavor of the work of Kahneman and Tversky and how they found that people may not act in the most logical way all the time. Stay tuned for some more examples.